for so one of the very first things you're going to notice is I will be accessing um, most of the data sets we are using um, assume that the data source or the input data is in CSV format but, but that's not to say that that's the only format that you have access to, right? Um, if you remember, some of the things we had hinted about uh, issues to do with, for instance, um, this idea that um, you can actually, so once you install your, once you install your, um, your Python pandas, for instance, right? Uh, Python pandas library apparently, there's a thin line between library and the, the module in in, uh, in Python. I've come to say, I've, I've come to learn, right? So um, remember this, right? So we import this with alias PD. And by the way, so one of the reasons why sometimes you will see me using aliases like you know PD or POT is because uh, a lot of people do this in tutorials, right? You find you come across tutorials where you're importing Panda. Um, it's a standard practice for you to import it this way. But that's not to say that you can't just do it uh, and import pandas, right? And then everything you're looking for will be accessible via pandas dot. But in this case, because I'm using the alias PD, I do a PD dot, right? Um, so what I was saying is that we could do a PD read, and what you notice is that we can, we can actually read data in so many different ways, right? Um, what I've come to learn is it's... Uh, for me, it's a lot easier to play around with CSV files. So, in fact, the strategy I employ in almost all the projects I work on, <coughs> most of the projects I've worked on is uh, irrespective of the source. What I'll do is I'll do some very basic pre-processing before I import into pandas. And the final output of the basic pre-processing is always a CSV file. So I almost always use uh, pd.read. But that's not to say that you actually cannot um, do interesting things like, for instance, if you decide to, um, to access uh, data from, let's say here, right? I don't know if I'm going to be online here, but that's not to say you can't, there we go. That's, that's not to say you can't do weird things like, like read HTML, right? Read H HTML. And this should be able to work. I hope. It's going to take a while here because I'm connecting. Of course, I mean, it assumes there are some tables that exist. So if I access a page that I know has tables, I can rewrite this, right? And uh, try and see if I can, I can actually read the table, right? So there you go. Um, it may not be that interesting if you're working on um, I suppose a website that's implemented with uh, a content management system like WordPress in this case, right, with the typical default features. But if you attempt to, if you attempt to access, uh, let's say, uh, structured content, right, still HTML content, but structured content like on Wikipedia, for instance, what you'll notice is you actually get uh, some really interesting results, right? And then you can play around with this data, right? Of course, I mean, you do the usual, right? You create your variable, let's just say Lambia uh, wiki here is equal to this. And hopefully, if we check the type, I'm not sure what type this is, but if we use the type built in function and check the type, it's a list, um, we can try and uh, run other weird things like the len, which is a length built in um, function to try and see. The size of the list we see is 25. We can then pick out maybe the first item in the list, right? Just to see what it is. And what you'll notice here is you can easily match this information, right? If we go to the beginning here, um, I suppose. You can match this information with, yeah, Republic of Zambia, with what you are seeing here, right, on this page with what you see on the Zambia Wikipedia page again, if that makes sense. All right, so I think what we are seeing there is uh, information which is in this info box, I believe, right? We have things like, uh, you know, the Zambia culture, GDP, 
uh, you know, uh, tribes that we have, uh, issues to do with chief justice. You see this stuff here. Um, this is the stuff that is somewhere here, right? Like the speaker is nearly moot or something. Right, anyway, uh, perhaps we can also do weird things like check what is at the end of the list. But, so that's that. And then, the other thing here is if you look at other, other interesting... Yes, sir? So, when you say you read HTML, it's only for the tables in HTML. So, the way it's designed, it's, it's looking for structured information. Um, and then to extract information that is in tabular format, yes, by default. But I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if you did a, a help, um, a help, and then you did a the Zambia Wiki. Uh, uh, sorry, if you did a help, and then you did a PD dot read HTML. You should be able to have other parameters that you can pass that function, perhaps that will enable you to read uh, information that may not necessarily be structured. I don't get to use that more often myself. Um, so, I mean, other weird examples, right, would be pd.read, let's see here. So CSV, CSV is an easy one, right? Everybody knows how to read. I mean, this is examples we've been, we've been, uh, we've been using here, right? Um, I'm wondering if maybe can try and see if we can uh, find some CSV file. Okay. From last year, hopefully. Right, so read CSV and uh, one of the parameters, one of the very first parameters you specify is the location of the CSV file that you want to read. Right, and by default what you will realizes that it assumes that uh, the separator is, is a comma. Um, but what I've found helpful myself when I'm working with CSV files because of the nature of the information I work with is to use a different type of separator. So I'll use weird characters like maybe the pipe symbol or the carrot symbol, for instance, because I know that the likelihood of uh, working with text where somebody uses the carrot symbol or the pipe symbol like the odds are quite low. I know, when you're reading up information to do with like chemistry and maths, maybe people represent, you know, formulas like with those weird characters. But for the most part, right, if you use those obscure characters as separators, you should be, you should be okay. So I tend to use the pipe, carrot, and the tilde, right? So anyway, so this file, for instance, has a separator, which is a pipe symbol, right? And then I'll be able to read the data like that. Um, so as usual, because when you run it like this, it's just going to print this on standard, uh, standard output. So what you'd want to do is obviously assign a variable, right? So I'll call this uh, Unza D space or something, right? Assign this as a variable. And if I run the built-in function type to check what sort of type this is, what you notice is that this is your pandas data frame. And because this is a pandas data frame, all of those things that we quickly um, looked at in the most recent interaction, um, apply, right? So I can run weird things like unza dispace dot columns, right? To check the structure of the data that I'm working with, the corpus that I'm working with. Or, yes? So it's not necessary to use the data frame method to make something in data frame? You can. So it, it depends on what sort of input you're working with, right? There are instances where you might want to read something that may not necessarily be or you'd be working with something that is not going to be a data frame, but you want to convert that into a data frame. You can do that. And one of the reasons you'd want to cast it into a data frame is because maybe there are certain interesting methods associated with data frames that you'd want to work with. This so context. Yeah, so in this case, uh, when you import, when you read data uh, using the read under bar CSV method, um, it's a deep war here between is it a function or a method, method, um, it's called a function here if you look it up. Uh, it automatically convert this into a data frame. So it's already a data frame, right? So we can, we can actually take a peek at this to see, right? Um, to see, right? Remember those uh, functions like head, right? The top N observations in your data frame, right? By default, I think, is it five or 10 or something? It's five, but you can feed it uh, an optional 
argument, right? That specify, specifies how many things you want to see. Uh, typically, two or three is enough. In fact, in this case, because you know, the information is a lot, even two is too much. So I, what I would do in this case is I would say, I just want to see the first record, right? Just want to look at the first record. Because it can't fit here, right? Looks a bit strange here. See these ellipses? Remember that? What I can do is I can also transpose this, right? So that I see the information. And, and hopefully this will enable me to do some sort of basic verification to say, you know, the structure of information is similar to the original CSV file. Right? Not only that, I mean, you can do fancy things like check um, the relative, or not relative, but the number of columns and rows, right? If you have a CSV file, how do you verify that you've managed to import everything? There are usually errors sometimes, right? So what you'd want to do is check how many records do you have, right? There are interesting things, right? Methods, things like shape, right? So I see here that uh, I have a total of 5,440 records, right? With 12 columns. So this should uh, uh, amount to 12, for instance. Right, so CSV. Um, Another interesting thing, and I remembered this because I was, uh, or I was creating some mailing lists for the entire program, all the students in our, in our department, and I realized I would use that as a, a basis to showcase how you would read Excel. Now you think about it, right? Your typical use case, if, if you're really working towards implementing um, some, some interesting uh, data mining solution that's going to be used in a real world environment, it's likely that you'll be working with standard data types, right? Input uh, formats like Excel. Everybody uses Excel, right? So instead of you wasting time, oh, I'm going to open these Excel documents and convert them to CSV, you can actually read Excel, right? So I have, uh, I hope it's not uh, sensitive information. I don't think it is, but I have, uh, I have this data, for instance, this is in Excel, right? Um, X, LS. I mean, I'm opening it in Libre, Libre uh, Office Calc, but still Excel nonetheless, right? This is the structure. All I'll do in this case is I'll import pandas as PD, and then what I'll do is I'll do PD read, right? Excel. And then just specify the location of this Excel workbook, they say, right? So I'll, um, I'll just copy the absolute location, come here, paste it there and then copy the name of the file here, like so, right? And then I'm able to read the data. Again, I mean, you can assign, uh, I'll just say student database, so that's student DB. You can assign a variable and then check the type of this variable. We see that this is a pandas data frame as well, right? Um, not only that, right, we can do interesting things like read uh, what other common format. I mean, literally everyone in here has at some point worked with JSON responses. And in fact, it's fairly common now, right, to have applications that will have RESTful uh, interfaces, right? RESTful APIs that will, in all likelihood, uh, you know, uh, spit out a response in JSON format, right? Um, an example, right? And we've done this uh, a lot. I guess we've done a number of problems where we look at Osaka Times and you know, Facebook's Graph API and all these funny things here. But um, um, we can do this as well, right? This post or something. I don't know if it says on WordPress. It should be post or something. Is it post? This is the part where we ask chat GPT, right? Is it post or something? Uh, wasting time here. Anyone know, uh, has anybody in here worked with uh, uh, WordPress RESTful API? I'm trying to find, uh, actually maybe this has um, endpoints specified, right? Somewhere, post. Probably not. Or POS. I'm just looking for, um, could have been the one that I overlooked. I'm just looking for 
an actual endpoint that will allow us to extract this information. Um, I know we were looking at it the other day. I'm wondering why this thing doesn't remember that uh, we were looking at it, right? Probably not vision. One, pause. Maybe I have it somewhere here. Let's see. I know we're looking at it. There we go. So V2. Okay. This is fine. So, I, I mean, we can read information in JSON format, right? Uh, imagine what sort of uh, interesting applications, or, or what sort of interesting things you can, you can do with, uh, with this sort of input data, right? Anyway, maybe some interesting analysis or something. But um, you can do your read JSON and then specify uh, the URL. And I know usually, I mean, you, you tend to run into this 403 error. So just to showcase what I'm trying to do, I will just, uh, uh, I will just, uh, I'll just uh, export this in here, right? As a file. So work with the JSON file. But the idea is the same, right? Uh, we'll just call this Lusaka times the JSON or something. And then we want to get all of these posts, right? So hopefully we'll get um, a JSON file, right? Lusaka times the JSON file. And what we can do, right, is we can do the same thing we're doing the CSV file and uh, and um, and uh, and the Excel file, right? So read JSON, you specify the file, right? Um, but this has to be uh, absolute location, including the name of the file. So forward slash Osaka times the JSON, and then there you go, right? I mean, suffice to say, in this case, we only have like about is it 10 rows or something and 27 columns, right? But what you will notice is that these columns that we've uh, the 27 columns will correspond to these things, like the ID, for instance, right? The ID. The read function is only taking columns, so you could actually say get um you should be able to i think you should be I've, I've not tried it out but you should be able to to uh feed it html code as a string you're saying right instead of actual page it should be possible to do that um but what i was trying it should be possible i've never tried it but what i was saying here is you have this sort of information um and as usual you can save uh, uh lusaka times is equal to this, right? And then you can check the type of this, right? Just to be certain, you're working with what you want. This is a pandas data frame as well. And we can do the usual, right? Val, Lusaka times, check the columns we're working with, right? You notice that ID, date, you know, uh, date, GMT, um, uh, author, will correspond to the things that are associated to an article, right? On Lusaka times like a blog post, a post, a news item. There'll be an author, there'll be a title, there'll be an excerpt, right? There'll be the full uh, article, there'll be images. Uh, of course, <laughs> you won't see images here, but links to images, right? Um, and that makes sense. So just imagine what sort of interesting things you can do there, right? Um, of course, I mean, if you, if you are wanting to uh, do interesting things here, you could say, I want to see just the title, right? That's one of the obvious things you'd want to access, right? then you have access to some of these things that hopefully correspond with what you, you actually see when you go to lusakatimes.com. But that's that, right? Um, the other, I, I suppose, interesting thing here will be pd.read. Um, I'm wondering what we can... pd.read JSON. Uh, I've not done SPSS. I think I have done SPSS. I was working with some economics colleagues of mine that had a number of SPSS files. But that project never really materialized. But uh, I don't know. XML, obviously. Um, I imagine most of you work with databases, right? So you can read data um, via an SQL query, right? I think we should be able to check this. That would be fun. Um, 
So assuming we have this input here, right? This Unza thing here. What we can do is excuse. Um, we can try and see if we can import this uh, data into a database and then try and see if we can read this information, right? So, let's see here. I'm just going to say SQLit, um, then say Unza uh, DB, right? Dot Unza content dot DB. Um, and then just something like that, right? Uh, because this data is, uh, this CSV file is, the fields are separated by pipe symbol, right? Um, can do that, and then new line character here, and then I can, I can do the usual, right? Import this data into a table called metadata or something. And hopefully this has worked, right? Tables, yeah, there we go. Um, if we can, we can just do a simple count of the things that we have in here. No. Yeah, 5,440, right? Which is good. Um, so if we have a database like this, what we can then do is within Python, we can attempt to connect directly to a database. And, and, and you know this is probably something you'd find useful. Why? Because the vast majority of data that you'd be working with out there, right, in industry, is probably sitting in a database or something, in all likelihood, right? So instead of you exporting or doing a database dump, um, and then working with some weird uh, format, maybe CSV or something, what you can do is you can just create a connection to the database and then pull the information on the fly, <clears throat> right? So uh, we can do the usual, right, SQLit, um, which I hope I, three, I have. Um, I think pandas is already here. I don't know if like as PD. And then what we can do is we can create a connection, right? Uh, SQL it connection. SQL it dot connect. So once you install SQLite, it can just be imported directly in Python. You can be using like a specific uh, SQL packet. I think it comes by default. You mean the way I said uh, import SQL 3 Yeah. Um, I think it comes by default. It's a default package. It's one of those popular databases, right, that people work with. Yeah? So, again, okay, creating a connection. Um, same approach. This connection is linked to a specific database file, right, which is this unza uh, underbar content.db file, right? And then we specify the connection here, hopefully. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to create a connection here. And then we can now do a uh, Unza metadata or something, because that's a metadata uh, table is equal to uh, PD dot read, right? Uh, SQL query, right? And then we feed this with a query. Now, the obvious thing here is, uh, this, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the, the, the schema, data, data, the schema associated with, with this table, it's not very complex, right? We don't have to create some weird query that um, allows us to selectively choose specific fields. We can just pull everything. So we'll do a select star or something, right? Um, so we come here, we'll say the query is just going to be select, select star from, metadata using the connection var sqlit connection, right? And then if you check the type of this thing, what you'll notice is that it's hopefully it's a data frame as well, right? And you have access to the same data as the CSV file, right? Columns. You can also check the shape of this to just confirm that it corresponds to the total number of, uh, of observations and also the columns have to match as well, right? And then you, you do your thing here. So pretty, uh, pretty intuitive, pretty obvious. I'm sure people have come up with extensions that will allow you to read data in other weird formats, right? Um, but just know that for, for the obvious, uh, for the more common 
uh, formats, you already have functions that you can take advantage of, if that makes sense. All right. Sorry? Yes, so um, I don't know if this is your question here. Observe. What I have now is this, right? This Unza metadata here. This is a, a data frame, right? But typically what happens, right? If you look at your typical, you understand after today's class, your typical pipeline will involve so many different things. One of the end products will probably be information that you might perhaps want to export to a CSV file or something. You have methods, functions, right? Like data frame dot to HTML, to JSON, to LaTeX, or LaTeX, to Markdown, to NumPy. I've never used NumPy here or Pico here, but to SQL as well. So in fact, you can, you can generate, I guess, uh, SQL statements that will enable you to recreate some database or something if, if, you, if you export well, using the tool, uh, SQL, uh, is it function or method, right? This is quite nice. I mean, uh, I hardly ever, well, there are times when I'll do this. Usually, when uh, I always joke with people that I've invested so much time in, in spreadsheets, right? <laughs> and I feel bad sometimes that, um, you know, I don't get the opportunity to actually use a spreadsheet. So what I'll do usually is uh, I, I'll work in Python, and then if there's an intermediate result that I need to process, I'll export it to CSV and then import it into Google Sheets or something, and then I'll, I'll do whatever it is I need to do, and then re-import it into a diff different Pandas data frame or something. And it's probably a long way up the mountain top, but uh, you know, to each his own. Nobody says you should use Python, right? Through and through. <laughs> you can use a combination of different things here. Uh, so yes. 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 And I, 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 do, I, do, I do exactly what you are saying, actually. Sometimes, and because I'm lazy like that, so there are certain applications I use often, right? Uh, like Google Sheets, you know, processing results and compiling scores and all those things. And, uh, and so, to me, actually, I've never really quantified this, but I'm more efficient, right? If, if there's like some processing that involves formulas and all, I'm, I'm more efficient when I'm using a spreadsheet application than writing Python code. But I, I guess you can find equivalent Python code or something. So keep an open mind. These are things to think about. And there's, there's more, actually. I mean, so what you notice from the toy projects that we're going to share, the mini projects that we're going to share is that uh, you will have uh, weird ways of accessing data, right? Some of you will probably need to scrape that information, right? Uh, the beauty is if you just look up Python, you notice that there are modules that will allow you to scrape information from a web page, for instance. But anyway, um, I hope, uh, I hope uh, that's, uh, that's fine with everybody, right? I hope that's fine with everybody. Then we can, we can proceed. This is, I feel so bad about what's happening here, but that's fine. <laughs>